Chapter 9 is essentially an extension of Chapter 8 as we dive deeper into linear regression. Occasionally, you'll be dealing with a regression problem that includes subsets of data. By subsets, I mean that there are groups of data within the scatter plot. Okay, maybe males and females, maybe children and adults. Usually, you can see clusters within the data on the scatter plot, but not always. Uh, in a problem like this, look to the question, see if the question is leading you towards separating the data into two parts and running the regression separately or keeping them together uh, because it does depend on the individual situation. One word that you're likely to see at some point or another is extrapolation. Extrapolation is when we begin to plug in numbers that are outside the bounds of the data that was used to create the model, the equation that we're using. The farther away the x value is that we're plugging in, compared to the average x value of all the data we use to create the model, to create the equation, the less trust we have in whatever we're getting out from our equation. When we plug in something that's far away outside of those bounds, it's called extrapolation. We're assuming that the trends that we're seeing are gonna continue, and a lot of times uh, that's a foolish assumption to make. Here's a graph that includes both subsets of data and extrapolation. The horizontal axis shows the year, vertical axis shows the age of first marriage by men. Obviously, we don't have a linear association here, but we can break it into groups, into subsets of data, and run regressions on those individual groups. They did a regression on just those blue points, and they got this line of best fit. Obviously, we wouldn't want to use that blue line to approximate or predict a value for 1980. Okay, the trends have changed. Really, anything past, say, the late 1940s, it would be inappropriate to plug in data for that equation. Okay, if we made an equation with this red data here, obviously the age of first marriage can increase forever. At some point, this is either going to level off or it's going to turn back around. Okay, so we want to stop around where the data stops. I think it's about 2000. Uh, anything past 2000, we're extrapolating. We're not sure if those trends are going to continue, uh, so we don't want to do that. Now let's talk about outliers because there's a lot of different ways we can classify outliers. There's outliers that are high leverage. There's outliers that are influential. Uh, there's outliers that are both, neither, etc. All right, so outliers can have large or small residuals. Uh, the leverage that an outlier has comes from how far away it is from the average X value. The farther away it is on the x-axis, the higher leverage the point is. An influential point is a, any point that would change the regression line if it's removed from the data. In many cases, outliers are going to jump out of a residual plot and we'll be able to see it. That's not always the case with influential points. Oftentimes, they're going to hide. Uh, and the reason is because it's an influential point. It's affecting that regression line. It's pulling the line towards the point uh, and creating a small residual for itself. Uh, for that reason, it's easier to see influential points in the scatter plot compared to the residual plot. In the previous notes video, we talked about how correlation is not causation and the concept of lurking variables and how there can be some kind of external source of variation that's affecting both of our variables at the same time. For that reason, regardless of how strong the correlation is, regardless of how strong the R squared value is, we can never say that one variable is causing the other one. Here's a perfect example why. In this scatter plot, along the y-axis, we have the life expectancy for a number of different countries. And along the x-axis, we have doctors per number of people in that country. You can ignore the square root. It's an, a re-expression, which we'll be covering next chapter. So we can see that there's a positive, linear, moderately strong association. It makes sense. The more doctors we have per people, the higher the life expectancy we would expect in that country. Now let's change the explanatory variable from doctors per person to TVs per person. We'll keep that response variable as life expectancy. And we can see that when we do that, we actually have a stronger correlation than we did with doctors per person. So lesson learned from these two graphs, if we want to increase the life expectancy of a country, we should send them more TVs. Obviously, that's not the case. While there is a certain impact that comes from having access to a television, it's not likely that that's causing more of an impact 
on life expectancy than the number of doctors in a country. More likely, there's a lurking variable that's affecting both of these things, life ex expectancy and the number of TVs and the number of doctors, such as the economic activity of the country or the, the standards of living. Countries with higher standards of living are gonna have longer life expectancies and more doctors and more TVs. Higher standards of living causes changes in both of these variables. That's what a lurking variable is. And that's why we can never say that one of the two variables in our scatter plot is causing the other one to change. Lastly, I just wanna make a note about working with summary values. When we're talking about summary values, we're talking about taking a data set and summarizing it into simple pieces of information like the mean, median, standard deviation, et cetera. So here we have the actual data. We can see that there's a strong positive linear association between weight and height for men. And we can see that for every height, okay, there's a number of different values. Okay, so we could take all these and we can summarize them with a single point, say take the average of them or the median of them. When we do that, we get this graph. We can see it's a much stronger correlation. All these points that are summarizing uh, the more scattered points from the previous slide have moved towards the center. They're tighter around the line. And that's why we don't really want to use summary values. It's because it gives us a false impression of how strong an association is between two variables. Summary statistics always vary less than individual values do. That goes for all data, not just data with scatter plots.